So when it comes to credit cards, obviously they are very easy to use and they're extremely convenient. But when it comes to actually paying them, it can be a little bit confusing for newer credit card users because there's a lot of terminology out there that we need to find so we can understand what we're actually doing. We're just gonna define some of these basic terms when it comes to credit cards and the videos aren't gonna take very long. So if you wanna understand what the billing cycle is on your credit card, it's very easy to understand because it's basically the beginning of all of the different payment processes. And it starts with the billing cycle because generally you're gonna have about a 30 day window and inside that window, whenever you make different purchases, that is your billing cycle. And eventually that billing cycle is gonna end and then they're gonna come out with what's called a statement balance and that is gonna be your defined amount that you owe, and that is gonna have a specific due date that's due about 25 days after the cycle ends. So the billing cycle is just a time period in which you can make purchases, and that's all that it is. Now you do need to understand that the billing cycle can actually start at any day of the month, because if you sign up for a credit card on let's say the 17th, and they activate it the same day, then technically your billing cycle would start right then on the 17th and probably end the following month on the 17th. Now this can get a little bit confusing because when you're going month to month and you're trying to manage a budget, it can just be a little bit hard when the 30 day window is happening in the middle of the month. So what I would recommend doing is calling up your credit card company if your billing cycle starts on a random day and tell them that you want the billing cycle to start at the beginning of the month that way it always starts on the first and then it'll generally end on around the 30th. That way it's pretty much month to month and it's a lot easier to budget that way. And this is especially true if you have multiple credit cards because if you have one credit card over here that starts on the first, another credit card that starts on the 10th, and then another one that starts on the 20th, it can get very hard to manage when those credit cards are actually due because they are all gonna have different due dates and it can just get really confusing. So if they all start at the first of the month and then they end at the end of the month, then generally the due dates are kind of gonna be around the same time as well, which would be about the 25th, 26th of each month. That way you know every single one of your credit cards is due around the same time and it just makes things a lot easier. So when it comes to the billing cycle, just remember that it's a window of time that's generally about 30 days long and anything that you do with the credit card within the window, so we're talking either purchases or even returns, anything you're doing is gonna happen inside that billing cycle and once the cycle ends, then they're gonna account for everything that happened and they're gonna give you a statement balance that's gonna be due about 25 days after that billing cycle closed. And if you're ever in the market for a new credit card, be sure and check out creditcards.com. I've got an affiliate link for them in the description below. So go ahead and check them out if you have an interest because they have a very large selection of extremely competitive credit cards and basically you can just compare which ones are gonna be better for you as far as your spending goes, and then you can just go from there. So when it comes to your statement balance, this one can be a little bit confusing because you've gotta understand where it's coming from. Basically what's happening is you have a billing cycle that's generally about 30 days long, and anything within that window, we're talking purchases or returns, they're gonna be inside the billing cycle, and then once the cycle ends, then you're gonna be given the statement balance. And this is gonna include all of your purchases, all of your returns, and if you're accruing any interest or fees, that's also gonna be tacked on to that bill. So your statement balance is basically what you owe, and you're gonna be given about 25 days for a due date so that you have plenty of time to get that ready and paid off by the time it's gonna be late. Now what you do need to understand about the statement balance is it's one of the most important payments that you can make on your credit card. Because if you pay off your statement balance in full every single month by the due date, then you're never gonna have to pay any interest on your credit card. So if you wanna have everything interest free, just pay it off every single month by the due date, absolutely in full, and you never have to worry about paying any interest. So basically, if you have a $1,000 statement balance and it's due by the 15th, then just make sure to pay off that full thousand bucks by the 15th and you never have to worry about paying any interest. But if you happen to pay any less than that thousand dollars by the due date, then you are gonna start accruing interest. So let's say that you pay $999 instead of the thousand, well, just that $1 left over, now you're gonna accrue interest on that dollar 
but you're also going to lose your grace period going forward. And the grace period is just the gap between when the closing date ended and when the due date is. So between about that 25 days, if you've made any purchases, you are going to start accruing interest on those purchases going forward. So make sure that you pay off your statement balance in full completely every single month by the due date and you don't have to worry about paying any interest. Now, if you are paying interest on your credit card because you can't pay off that statement balance in full every single month, don't worry, just try and stop using your credit card if you can do that and get that statement balance low every single month going forward so that eventually you can pay it off in full because once you pay it off in full two months in a row, then you're gonna be interest-free again and going forward, as long as you can continue that, then you don't have to worry about ever paying any interest. So just remember that the statement balance is an accumulation of everything that happened within the last billing cycle, plus any interest or fees if those applied to your credit card. And then once you're given the statement balance, you're gonna be given about 25 days ahead of time, which is your due date, to get that sucker paid off or to make a payment towards it. Also, once your statement balance comes out, please make sure that you at least make the minimum payment by the due date in order to avoid any other problems. Because if you don't pay off at least the minimum by the due date, then you're gonna accrue late fees, a higher interest rate on the credit card, and even worse, you can have a ding on your credit report for making a late payment, which is really bad and it can really hurt your credit score. So even though the minimum payment is a total ripoff on your credit card, just make sure to at least pay that by the due date in order to avoid any other problems. So if you want to know what the grace period is on your credit card, it's very easy to understand because basically once your billing cycle ends on the credit card, you're then going to be given the statement balance, which is going to be due about 25 days ahead of time. So during that 25 day period, that gap is also considered the grace period. And as long as you've been paying off that statement balance in full every single month by that due date, then you're not gonna be accruing any interest, including all of the purchases that you're making during that gap. Because most people, once you have a due date ahead of you, you're not gonna stop using your credit card. You're gonna keep using it every single day and those transactions still have to be accounted for. So that is considered your grace period, and technically it is interest-free as long as you've been paying off that statement balance in full every single month. Because if you're not paying it in full, then you've lost your grace period technically, and you are accruing interest on any of those purchases going forward. So basically, if you were given a statement balance of just $100 and it was due 25 days from now, well, you're probably still gonna be making purchases on your credit card. So let's just pretend that you spend about $600 on random stuff between that gap, which is your grace period. Well, if you don't pay off that $100 in full by the due date, then you're also gonna start accruing interest on the $600 that you've already spent. So what I would advise is always to pay off your statement balance in full by the due date, then you never have to worry about losing your grace period and you never have to worry about ever paying any interest. So just remember that the grace period is always gonna be the gap between when the billing cycle ends and the statement balance is due, which is generally about 25 days for most credit cards. So basically the way that the minimum payments work on your credit card is that every single month when you're given your billing statement, you always have the option to just pay off the minimum payment by the due date, which is generally about one to 3% of your statement balance. So as long as you're making that minimum payment every single month, you're not gonna accrue late fees, you're not gonna have any dings on your credit report, and that's all fine and dandy. But the problem is, is that you're also paying interest on that minimum payment, and most of that payment is interest. So if you're making a $55 minimum payment, most likely $50 of that is gonna to be towards interest and $5 is gonna to be towards your balance. So you really wanna avoid making the minimum payment at all costs, but if you have to, then go ahead and do it. And you also need to realize if you're making the minimum payment every single month, because you're mostly paying interest, it's gonna take you a very long time to get the balance paid off. Because even if you had a $2,000 balance on your credit card, but you were only making a $25 minimum payment every month, you could be looking at 10, 20 years, depending on how the credit card's calculating interest, to get that balance paid off. So you really wanna pay more than the minimum payment whenever you can, because it will take you forever to get that thing paid off because it's mostly interest. 
So what it really comes down to is if the due date is creeping up on you and you have no other choice other than to make the minimum payment, then go ahead and do that because at least you're not gonna accrue any late fees or have a higher interest rate, or even worse, get a ding on your credit score for having a late payment, because that can really hurt your credit score. So make the minimum payment if you have to, but most of the time, the minimum payment is gonna be so low that you can probably pay more than that. And I would highly recommend doing that so that you can get that balance paid off and you're not paying as much interest every month.